Hi, Sachin. Hey, Dinkar. So, Sachin, um, lately uh, you have been talking a lot about uh, waste management, uh, managing waste, uh, uh, not in real life, but in life of a developer. And yeah. I, I think that's a very interesting topic. So I just wanted to hear, uh, pick your brains a little bit about this uh, topic. So maybe before we get started, can you just quickly introduce this thought process and uh, what you're doing on that? So uh, Rinkar, uh, recently I took the charge of leading globally the engineering effectiveness solution. And uh, when you are thinking about bringing effectiveness to your organization, which is engineering organization. The first time uh, thing comes to your mind is how do I even like measure whether I'm effective or not? And uh, you and I have talked about metrics at length on this podcast, and we continue to talk about it. And uh, when we introduce this Evo metrics, which is engineering excellence to business outcomes, our focus is whether our engineering metrics are correlating and impacting the business outcomes which you wanted to achieve. So that's all right. But then, hypothetically, let's say that you, uh, you, your conclusion is that your engineering excellence is not impacting as much as you wanted to your business outcomes. What do you do then? The first natural instinct you will come up with is, OK, where are the gaps? What's not working? Why am my engineering excellence is lacking? In, in, in short, where is my effectiveness lacking as an engineering organization? And how do I even like go about it? So there is a saying, I don't know who said it, but uh, if you can't measure, you can't improve. So how do you even measure effectiveness of an organization? And then we go into this decade, multi-decade old debate of like measuring engineering productivity. Hmm. The, the biggest challenge with measuring engineering productivity is that there is no unit of software, which we have repeatedly said on this podcast is I cannot say clear trip mobile app is 150 units versus Amazon mobile app is 2000 software units. And since mm -hmm. I can't do that, um, it's impossible for me to even like divide that by number of people, number of hours spent and say, this is my throughput. So I am not going to be able to reliably measure across the teams, not in, in, in a way I could create some rudimentary rules, basic uh, hypothesis, some assumptions, and then say, this team is going from level one to level two, just like we have story points. Story points is a, a relative sizing of stories, and it works pretty well for a small group of people when they adhere to a certain set of rules. The challenge happens when you want to compare team A with team B. Their mm -hmm. story point scale is very different. Similarly, you will never be able to reliably measure team A's output with team B's output. And that's a futile exercise in my mind. Then what can you measure? How do you even measure? Although you cannot measure the throughput and productivity, you can measure the waste which is happening within your team. Mm -hmm. and, that's okay. how, uh, and that's how you go about it, right? If, if I am feeling that I am not able to do enough, I'm not productive enough in my day, let's say. The simplest thing which I do is that how much time I'm spending watching Netflix? Uh, and am I doing exercise or not? Um, unless, you're or a, not. unless you're a critic and watching Netflix is important. To if you. that is my job, that will be great, Dinkar. I mean, like, I'll be so good at it. I'm already like doing half of the work. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and I, if I get paid for that, fantastic. <laughs> wow. the, the challenge is this this is something which everybody of us has done whenever we felt that we need to do more and we are not getting time to do that whether it is your hobbies whether it is your work whether it is your exercise you look at what all activities you are doing and you start eliminating step by step things which you feel are waste you say um i am spending too much time watching netflix can I just like watch 30 minutes less and read a book instead or mm -hmm. play piano or uh, like do work um, or reduce meetings during my day? You and I both have focus times on our calendar for a reason. So these are activities which you do. 
essentially you don't know how much productive you are you are just eliminating waste during your day and that is how you become more productive you have more you create more capacity available for the meaningful activities which you intend to do that is so the so, uh, uh, standard uh, model yeah i think it becomes very critical here to have a common understanding of uh, waste uh, right oh, yeah. so how how does in 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 the life of a developer like who defines waste is it a developer is it the team is there a standard definition uh, what what is waste in this context of engineering effectiveness thank you uh, in fact i was about to go there and uh, <laughs> this question is very critical because it sets that context so um rather than waste there also we do a flip rather than mm-hmm. thinking about waste you, what you do is you figure out what you want to achieve so you do a value stream mapping of your end to end organization so think about you are you are generating value where the value is getting created in your engineering teams they are writing that software they are testing the software they are deploying it to production and who is the recipient of the value it is end users it is business it is internal stakeholders whoever are right now internal stakeholders giving what they want to do and then it comes to engineering they do their value generation and it goes back to stakeholders or end users that's a loop now this is value stream from one end to the other you don't need to do complete loop in the sense uh, like end to end but you can take a big chunk of it or sometimes even full loop like requirement to uh, uh, delivery into production that uh, that portion of your loop and you can start like identifying what all or the steps are in this value stream hmm. so how much time you need to gather requirement let's say what are the blockers there then you you transfer these requirements into engineering organization then developers are Uh, how do they actually pick up these stories is the backlog curated enough and then after that do they have the right tools can they actually get the security how many manual steps are there uh, between them and path to production and do they have right environments how much mm-hmm. time they are spending in fixing bugs how many regulation issues happen and then you will realize that each of these stages will surface a lot of friction between these stages yeah or sometimes do in their workflow and then you can identify whether this is critical for generating value or this is a waste so you don't need to go with there are some typical standard waste for example you can say how much time is being spent into non productive meetings sometimes some organizations have this tendency of like gathering 25 people in a room and doing these group meetings for mm. triaging of box i would say now do you need 25 people in a room for one and a half hour to do triaging of box because let's say i am responsible for one part of the system and there are two bugs which came about that i just need to there be there for 5 minutes my job yeah. was there to be 5 minutes i'm mostly dozed off during rest of the time or i'm just like checking email or doing something whatever right that is is one type of waste meetings unnecessary meetings but then you can do this value stream mapping identify friction points identify waste and then sometimes the waste is actually process sometimes it is tools do you mm-hmm. are you using the right tools for example you are using let's say um, ci cd tool to put your code into production but there is a manual step of security review Mm. this is a process waste mm. what can you automate there does somebody has to hit a button and say i approve before uh, or you can do a static analysis or you can say these type of changes can go to production so the promotion of the build happens automatically and these are the waste which are from team to team from company to company culture to culture and you identify all these waste and figure out what type of improvements you can do and what is your plan for improvement if you started addressing all these issues essentially you have now a baseline you put in measurements and then you start addressing them hmm. that's how you will 
do evidence based uh, delivery and then make sure that your effectiveness of team goes up so if you reduce your waste more capacity will be available from your engineering right. organization now right. where do you deploy that capacity you can you can deploy that capacity in building new things uh, improving existing things or you can also say that hey earlier my people used to work 8 to 10 hours a day i can actually make them work one hour less and then I'll, I'll let them be free that could be yeah. one good outcome too yeah a lo lot of people would love an outcome like that because no one really works for just eight hours. Things do get yes. uh, stretched. I think such a uh, value stream mapping is a tool that unfortunately is not used enough in organizations. And I think uh, I I hope that uh, like there is this surge of interest in metrics. There's a surge of interest in value stream mapping and um, the benefits that it can uh, bring to the organization. So I think uh, this was a good introduction to the concept of waste. And in the subsequent podcast, I do want to spend some time uh, thinking and discussing how the EBO metrics kind of um, sits next to uh, this uh, concept of waste reduction and uh, how we can help business figure out what are the business outcomes uh, that to Absolutely. Expect. I think uh, th th this uh, this is a very exciting uh, space today. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Sachin. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.